Hey what's up guys today I'm going to show you how to make a start menu which is controlled by a keyboard just like this so let's get started So here you can see we have a start menu we have a sound effect when we go up and down and it goes infinitely it cannot glitch out just like this and if I press enter it will work so let's get started so first of all you need some assets just like this these are made in photoshop and might be hard to make in scratch so you can just make things like this in scratch like a low title and text like play control send quit any buttons you want and also this arrow which will be like selecting our buttons you can see i have segregated them here we have the play button the controls and the quit arrow instead of being here it is in the center because it should go up and down according to the x and y instead of going through the costume and we have a background and a logo here so let's get started with the code so first of all when the green flag clicked hide and now we'll make a block called build with a number input then start with another number input naming start run without screen if it should be checked click on okay and we have a new block here and now make a variable called clone number this will be for the sprite only click on okay set clone number to start then repeat build number times create clone of myself and change clone number by 1 the change clone number by 1 should be above this so what this block will do is create clones instantly even if this value is 1000 it will create it instantly so we'll make the number of items we have we have the background with the title so it is 1 2 3 4 and 5 so we'll set it to 5 and start from 0 so when i start as a clone First of all, it should be visible because we have made the sprite hidden. So go to front layer and show. Going to front layer will overlap all the clones above the previous one. So that would be like the background should be first and the button should be the last. Then if clone number is equal to 1, switch to costume backgrounds. Then duplicate this. If clone number is equal to 2, switch to costume play button. And now this is the play button. So we'll code the button thing. So now we'll make a variable called button selected for all sprites so this will contain the button which has been selected like if it is the play button so it will be one so we'll put a script like forever if else and an equal to operator button selected is equal to one so if the first button is selected which is our play button it will set the brightness effect to minus 20 so it is a bit different from the other buttons then duplicate this and put it in the else and it should be zero so it is back to normal when it is not selected. Then you can duplicate this, put it here. If clone number is equal to 3, switch to costume controls button. And now you can just change this value to 2. Also for the next one, duplicate and put 4, quit button and 3. This is that easy. Uh, now we'll duplicate and put it here. Clone number will be 5 and just remove this script. And it should switch to costume arrow. Arrow, make sure your arrow is in the center. So there are no glitches. So now we need to find the position where we can put this arrow as it is in the center. So you can just drag it like where it is made and you can just drag it and see the position. So I have just figured out the positions. So the X will be negative 225 and Y will be zero. So this will be the first button's value like this is for the first one. So after this, you need to figure out the second one. So I think it is minus 50. You can see this is now on the second one. And the next one would be obviously minus 100 if they are on the same distances. So what I will do is that put negative 50 here, the value of the second one and put a minus operator inside of the second one. And now I'll put the button selected variable here and put it 1. So button selected minus 1 into negative 50. And if you set button selected to 1 when the script runs, so you can see it is standing in the front of play button. If it is 2, like if I set it to 2, it is going to the second and then third. So this is working. So now we need to do that by the script. So to do that, you need to find the empty clone. So instead of going to the arrow, I'll go to the background as it is empty. And now I'll make a simple script with forever if key up arrow pressed used to go up in the values like if we are on the control it will go play and also if we are on the play button it will go to quit and now we'll put here if key up arrow pressed and if else statement and now we'll put a equal to thing here so if the button selected is equal to one so it cannot go up and just go to zero you need to go to the third one because there are three buttons so set button selected to three and if it is not the case change button selected by negative one so if it is two it will go to one which is the upper one and that is pretty easy 
and this will be very fast if we don't put this so wait for 0.1 seconds and duplicate this put it below this script if key down arrow pressed and now you need to just change these values so button selected will be 3 here will be 1 and here will be 1 and the point 0.1 should be there so now this should work let's see so when i press the down arrow arrow key this is working pretty fine and now we'll add the sound effects so you need to just get any sound effect i got this from scratch library so let me show you this so this is pretty good according to the theme so you need to just put start sound clang and put it here like here and also here that is pretty easy make sure these are in the different if else blocks like this you can just remove them and put it like here do not by mistake put it here put it below the if statement and you can just put it in the forever loop and this should work you can see this is working pretty fine and that was for the movement and now we'll make how it should work so to make it work we'll just put if key space so we don't have the option for the enter key but i will put the enter key to do that just put a join block here then click on this and make it blank by pressing the backscape key and the second thing you can just put enter so it will be detecting the enter key and now you can just put here broadcast a new message called start so this will start your game and you can just put it in the play button and broadcast start and this should start your game if you have a script like this in your game you need to just remove the when the green flag clicked and instead put when i receive start and you need to also make one thing when the green flag clicked hide so it will just hide when the start menu is showing up and when the game starts it will show and now we also need to remove the start menu when we press enter so to do that it is pretty simple make a variable called delete all clones for the sprite only click on ok so now we'll put a script called when i receive start set delete all clones to one duplicate this put it here set delete all clones to zero and now put a delay so it will work wait for 0.1 seconds now another simple script when i start as a clone forever if put a equal to operator delete all clones is equal to one simply delete this clone and now when i play the game now you can see this is working when i press enter the start menu is deleted also one thing you need to fix is that put this inside of this if statement so it will not work every time we press enter and now the game will start now you can see this working with the play button not with other buttons and that is pretty cool also you can duplicate this and put it in the quit button right here and instead of broadcast start you can put stop all so it stops the game when we do that like you can see this works so this fall for this video hope you guys enjoyed smash like if you did thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next video